In this step-by-step -step installation guide, we'll be showing how to install Windows 95 within a program called DOSBox so that you can install older software that no longer runs on modern operating systems. This installation will be self-contained and can be launched directly from your desktop. Does your office still run billing or scheduling software from two decades ago? Did your boss just send you a Lotus spreadsheet that he needs some crucial information from? Or maybe you're feeling nostalgic for the golden age of PC gaming, for games like Star Wars Jedi Knight, Monster Truck Madness, or Diablo. Then this guide is for you. This installation allows you all the access to this old software on a virtual machine deliberately designed to emulate a top-end old computer. The emulation includes a Pentium processor, Sound Blaster 16 and Gravis Ultrasound sound cards, S3 Trio 64 2D video output, full Voodoo 3D acceleration, and more. Windows 95 might be just a bit outdated, but there are hundreds of useful, specialized, and just plain old fun programs out there that haven't, or will never be updated or run on current operating systems. This installation guide was designed to help you install Windows 95 so that you can run these programs. The best way to use this guide is to watch it while you're installing the software. All of the information you need to install DOSBox will be covered, and the exact commands that you need to type will be displayed on screen. So pause or rewind the video to make sure that you get all of the steps exactly right. Before you begin, make sure you download all of the programs and drivers listed on the downloads page. Once you have everything downloaded, you may notice that one crucial piece of software is missing. The most important program you need to install Windows 95 in our virtual computer is Windows 95 itself. This is a commercial program, so you'll need to have a copy of it before we can begin. So dig through those desk drawers, check in that shoebox in the closet, ask a friend, get your hands on an installation disk somehow. This will be the hardest part of the installation, I promise. Once you have that disk, you'll also need to download a few free programs before we can begin. In the section below, you'll find links to download the programs that we'll be using. DOSBox 0.74, DOSBox DOM, and a boot disk. We need all of these for our installation process. Install or extract them as necessary. We will be using DOSBox DOM and DOSBox 0.74 for our installation of Windows 95. Let's start by copying the boot disk to the DOSBox DOM folder. It's time to change a few settings so that DOSBox works well with Windows 95. We will be using the DOSBox DOM build. Locate the file called dosbox.conf. You may need to open this file using Notepad by right-clicking, selecting Open With, and choosing Notepad from the menu. We're going to change a few lines in this file so that we can install Windows 95. First, change the setting Output to equal OpenGLNB, no spaces. Then, scroll down and change the setting VMemSize to 4, and change the setting MemSize to 512. Next, scroll down two more sections and change the setting for Core to equal Dynamic, change the setting for CPU Type to equal Pentium, and change the setting for Cycles to equal Max. Scroll down a little more, find the setting for Voodoo, and change it to equal OpenGL. Again, no spaces there. Scroll down some, change the setting for GUS to True, and finally, scroll down to change the Glide setting to EMU. These settings are important, so make sure you change them exactly as shown on screen. Once you're done, save the file and close it. It's time to run the DOSBox program and get some things ready for Windows 95. Locate DOSBox.exe in the DOSBox folder and double-click it to begin. You will be met with a simple command prompt with a flashing cursor like you see here. We'll start by making a 1GB hard drive in our virtual computer. To do this, type the following command exactly as shown and hit enter. If you want to make a larger or smaller sized hard drive, change the 1024, but you shouldn't go higher than 2048, which is 2 gigabytes, since some versions of Windows 95 can't use more than that. It's going to take a little time to create the hard drive, so be patient. Once this is finished, you'll notice that the command prompt has given you some information. We'll be copying this information into the configuration file. If you've decided to use a different size, you'll need to write down the information that the command prompt gave you and use those numbers instead in the configuration file. So, close DOSBox, open the configuration file, and scroll to the very bottom. On a new blank line, type in the following exactly as shown here if you used one gigabyte like we've done in the video. This is telling our virtual computer that there's a floppy disk in the virtual disk drive, 
and our hard drive that will have Windows 95 installation files. OK, we're done with the configuration file now, so save it and close it. Now let's get back into DOSBox. We'll use the floppy disk that our virtual computer has in it to boot up what we need to start the Windows installation. Type the following into the command prompt, boot space hyphen L space A. It should tell you that it's starting MS-DOS. When it boots into MS-DOS, it may give you some error messages. That's OK. The important thing is that the drive letter should say A instead of Z. Now type FDISK, no spaces, and hit Enter. The FDISK program will give you a few options. We want to select number 1 to create a DOS partition, so type 1 and hit Enter. We want to create a primary DOS partition, so hit 1 again and Enter. The program will ask if you want to use the maximum available size, and yes, you do. So type Y into the prompt and hit Enter. You should now be prompted to restart your computer. If DOSBox doesn't automatically do this, simply close DOSBox and start it again to reboot the virtual computer. Once you've restarted, again type boot space hyphen L space A and hit Enter. We're ready to format the C drive, so simply type format space C colon and hit Enter. You will be given a warning that formatting the drive will lose all data. No problem. The drive we created a few minutes ago is empty anyway, so type Y and hit Enter. Once the formatting is complete, you'll be prompted to name your drive. You can use whatever name you want. We're using Windows 95. Once this is done, close DOSBox. Your virtual computer is set up and ready to have Windows installed. Now, we need a way to pass files between the real physical computer and the virtual one we've just created. To do this, we're going to be using the Computer Management tool. On your desktop, right-click on Computer and choose Manage. In the column on the right-hand side of the window, right-click on Disk Management and select Attach VHD, which stands for Attach Virtual Hard Drive. You'll be asked to locate your virtual hard drive. If you've been following this guide closely, the file we want will be in the same folder as DOSBox DOM. Navigate to there, select Windows95.img, and click Open. The virtual hard drive can now be accessed by your physical computer. You'll follow this process anytime you want to move data between your real computer and your virtual one. So we're now looking into the virtual hard drive we have created. You'll want to create a folder called Win95CD. Insert your Windows 95 disk into your computer and copy everything on it into this folder on your virtual hard drive. This will take some time, so be patient. When this is done, right-click on the icon for your virtual disk and click Detach VHD. This will safely detach it from the physical computer so it can be used by DOSBox again. OK, we now have a virtual computer, we've set it up so that we can use Windows 95, and we've put the installation files into it. Now let's install Windows. Start DOSBox again, and again type boot space hyphen L space A. Now we want to view our C drive, so type C colon at the command prompt and hit enter. At this point, there should only be a folder containing the Windows 95 CD. Switch into the folder by typing CD space Win95 CD and hit enter. Once there, type setup.exe space slash nm space slash is and hit enter. Now follow the on-screen prompts as Windows installs. Leave the default installation option set to C colon slash Windows. In the setup options, we'll select custom for our installation guide, but selecting typical here would be fine too. When the installation asks for your certificate of authenticity, enter the code that came with your original installation disk. When prompted to let setup analyze and detect your hardware, the best option is to simply allow it to do so by selecting yes. On the next screen, we'll only be selecting the sound and video card option. It's going to take some time for Windows to analyze the virtual computer, so be patient. This could take a few minutes to complete. Once this is done, and if you've chosen the custom installation, you'll be prompted to pick which programs you want to install. This is entirely up to you. You can pick all of the programs, none of the programs, or anything in between. Explore the menus and see what might be interesting. It won't affect our install. Click Next to continue through the installation steps. When prompted to create a startup disk, select No. We don't need one. Wait for the file copy to complete. This should take a few minutes at most. When it's done, click Continue when prompted. So far, so good. At this point, though, 
we would run into problems if we used DOSBox DOM in the next section. Don't worry, that's why we downloaded two versions of DOSBox before we began. Before that, though, we need to remove our virtual floppy disk from our virtual computer. Do that by removing the line that you had previously typed into the bottom of the configuration file. And add boot space hyphen L space C. Move your hard drive image from the DOSBox DOM folder into the DOSBox 0.74 folder. This move is only temporary. Since we're only using DOSBox 0.74 temporarily, we'll manually enter the command to continue the Windows installation. You'll only have to do this twice. Type the following into the command prompt. Remember, if you used a different size when you created the virtual hard drive, then you'll have to adjust this accordingly. Now boot into Windows Setup by typing boot space hyphen L space C. Now, a quick note here. You should notice that your mouse cursor is a big black square and that the screen isn't displaying quite right. Don't worry, we'll fix this shortly. Pick your time zone in the next screen and select OK. If you're prompted for printer setup, select Cancel. We won't be installing a printer. Once Windows is finished with this portion of the installation, it will reboot. Once DOSBox is running again, type in the same commands that you did before. This is the last time we'll be using DOSBox 0.74. Look at that. If you've followed this guide closely, you should now see the Welcome to Windows dialog. Now, you should notice immediately that the screen is displaying very poorly. That's okay. We are going to solve that problem now. Right-click on your desktop and click on Properties. Click on Settings and change the color palette setting to 16 colors. And make sure the desktop area setting is set to 640 by 480 pixels. Ah, much better. But we're still not quite done. So click on the Start menu and click Shut Down and close DOSBox. We're now finished with DOSBox 0.74. We'll move the image file back into DOSBox DOM. To do that, move the hard drive image back over to the DOSBox DOM folder that you had previously moved it from. Double click on DOSBox.exe to restart DOSBox. Windows 95 will detect new hardware. After this is finished, Windows is up and running. Congratulations, you are now running Windows 95 in a virtual computer. That's all there is to it. You can interact with Windows 95 on this virtual computer just like you would on a physical computer.